Cardio Visual presents Cath Lab and Coffee, episode two. Thank you for joining us. Lab, right? What is the, what's going on that a patient will go into the cath lab? What procedure or what is going on in their body? Chest pain. You have both emergency and non-emergent syncopal episodes. So people losing consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that is cardiac related. Sometimes it's not, but we always rule out first case scenarios first. So all these other things that are happening with them, if they have any type of cardiac history or indication that it might be a cardiac issue, they're going to come get the procedure done to rule it out. If it's that, great, we found it. If not, we ruled out one of the worst possible things that it could be and can move on. Um, so chest pain, syncope, um, fatigue. A lot of the stuff we have, especially with heart failure patients, is I'm just a little more tired than I normally am. And people say it might be old age or whatever, but we're gonna rule out some of the things that we might think it is first. And then again, move on from there. Uh, positive stress tests. So let's say you do get a cardiac workup every year. You have a history of cardiac disease. You've had stents before. If anything comes up abnormal in your routine exams, echo, stress test, 12 lead, you might get an indication for a cath that way. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you're having a surgery come up. So a lot of people are hip replacement is the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> so you're getting a hip replacement. Again, you have a history of cardiac disease or family history of cardiac disease. Something weird came up on your non-invasive stuff or your labs. They're going to come do a cath to make sure you're cleared for surgery and get what we call cardiac clearance to make sure you're in the best possible scenario to recover, especially from something that's an elective surgery. We want to make sure all of our bases are crossed just to keep you safe. Um, so let's just talk about like stable angina versus unstable angina. What's the difference? There's uh, several categories of acute coronary syndrome, but first I'm going to talk about what angina is in the first place. It's chest pain from ischemia of some kind. So ischemia is limiting blood flow to the tissues, to the heart muscle. So if your heart is in trouble because it's not getting enough oxygen, it has different ways of kind of alerting your body of that. And that's where we get to these categories. So stable angina is someone is having chest pain, but it gets really exacerbated with activity and relieves with rest when you stop that activity. Then you have the ones that we're more concerned with, which is in the umbrella of acute coronary syndrome or ACS. And that's, again, an umbrella term for a few different things. One is unstable angina. So that person will have a negative troponin when you get your labs done but you might see a lesion and they can also have chest pain. Then you have an N-STEMI, a non-STEMI, non-ST elevated MI that has to do with the 12 lead that we give a patient who is actively having chest pain. Their troponin is gonna be positive, but they're not gonna have ST elevation. So it's not something that someone looks at immediately and goes, oh my gosh, they need to go to the cath lab. It's a little questionable. They might see some other 12 lead related irregularities like ST depression and T wave inversions. For that patient, it's not 100% occlusion, it's not imminent, they might not be actively coding, but it is a partial occlusion that could reduce, be reducing a little bit of perfusion for that patient. And you and me, we could have the same lesion and you're going to present very differently than I am. Everybody's bodies are different depending on what else they have going on as well. And then you have the one that we all know, which is a STEMI. So that is the urgent emergency patient. They have positive troponins, you see ST elevation on their EKG or their 12 lead. And that one is the 100% occlusion from thrombus where you are very concerned with killing that myocardial tissue and time is muscle, right? So that is the one that's going to take precedence really over all of the others um, is the STEMI patient. So we categorize things mainly because like if Liz and I both had an event, we were both brought into the ED, we're both having chest pain and they want to send us both to the cath lab. How do you decide who goes first? Right. If, if Liz is having active chest pain, she has ST elevation, positive troponins, she's going first. If mm -hmm. I have chest pain, but only with activity, it's kind of relieved with rest, but my troponins are negative, but I don't have ST elevation, I can go after her. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, you need to take precedence over me. And, and unfortunately, especially when emergency rooms get very, very flooded with patients, you do have to prioritize people on who goes first. Cath labs have regular procedures like we talked about where, you know, you're in there because you need your hip replaced and you have to have this cath first. Someone else is in there because they've just been a little bit fatigued lately. So we have all these patients booked and then you come into the ED with an emergency. I got to, and two people come into the ED with the emergency. I got to decide 
who is going to go where. So thankfully, American Heart Association, ACC, really categorized that for us so that we feel confident in making those decisions of who goes when, do you need a cath today, can you get a cath tomorrow, and all that non-invasive testing and presentation really helps us make those decisions a little a little more confidently. We like rules. We like guidelines that we can kind of follow to help our decision making. Because if it was up to us, you know, everyone would go. But mm -hmm. that's that's not the reality. And, you know, pe people have limited resources to work with. And, and you've got to do what's best for your patient based on what they're presenting with at that moment in time. Yeah. And so there's outpatient procedures and inpatient procedures. So usually they kind of deem those two categories. And so usually the inpatient procedures are those non-STEMIs or STEMIs. Right. But sometimes you can have that just regular chest pain, you know, no positive troponins, and you're still doing a cath that day on that patient. So it just kind of right. depends. Because it could be something that's not to worry about, but mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable enough sending you home until I've really figured out, is it something that's ischemic and atherosclerotic in origin that I really want to do something about so that I'm more confident sending you home. And I live in Orlando. Half of these people don't live here. They're here on vacation. Mm -hmm. and I have to be comfortable enough being like, yeah, you can take your flight home. I'm not going to do that until I've really seen the full scheme of what's going on with you. Oh, what about the cardiac arrest people? So some people think, you know, someone's actively coding, they're doing chest compressions in the hallway, rolling them to us that we're going to be able to, to be magic, you know, and do something. And part of what we do is we need access. We need to find the artery to get access, to go in, to take the pictures. If someone doesn't have any blood flow because they're actively coding, that's really hard to do. Um, so some people get frustrated because they bring a patient to the lab and they're like, you didn't even do anything. Like you didn't even get in there and take pictures. Well, there's certain things that we need to be able to physically even be able to do that. Um, so I think that's an important thing to say. But yeah, active cardiac arrest patients, um, if you have, you know, Typically now they have some great Bluetooth and <laughs> type of devices where they can send the cardiologist a even a rhythm strip, sometimes a 12 lead from EMS and be like, hey, this is what it is, we're on our way. And they can activate the STEMI team while you know they're still doing getting the person in the in the truck to bring them over. And then you activate the STEMI team, someone they those people that you see did not, they don't work there overnight. They came out of bed or from the mm -hmm. shower or from the grocery store and are running in to come and help you. Um, Cause again, we, we treat everything like it is an emergency when you're in cardiac arrest until proven otherwise. Sometimes it'll be an ischemic cause. We can do something about it. Sometimes it won't, but all of them are gonna be treated like that until we've ruled out that it isn't. Mm 